at what point did you like uh i guess feel the most comfortable doing elmo because i imagine it was yeah. it was just like like again like you said before like, i can't believe i'm doing this like all this pressure yeah because how old were you at the, at the time that you started the 2013 what how old? i don't know i mean i probably was 20 i'm 30 now I'll okay. be 31. So whatever that was, I was in my twenties. Yeah. I, I, there was a moment because yeah. those first, first year or two were really rough because I was really just studying what came before study, study, yeah. study. And when you play a legacy character, that's something you really have to consider. There's so there's a laundry list of things you're thinking about on top of already, you kind of already have to be good at the performance acting side of it and the manipulation side of it. You know, you're going, I was going in to, um, take over a character that had some of the strongest manipulation of the, of these characters. So that was already sort of a lot to think about. So you're, you're thinking about, you know, the previous performers manipulation style. You're thinking about their cadences, their, do they have a diphthong? You know, what are the regionalisms and how, how do they manifest themselves in the character? All of those things were constantly in my brain. And I would just, when I wasn't working, I would be watching tape over and over and over and over video, not tape over and over and over again. And just listening to, to to Elmo over and over, and uh, there did come a time where I could sort of relax. Yeah. I was very rigid in that first year or two, and it shows. I mean, in the performance, it's very stilted and it's by the books, but there is an insecurity in it, and I think, which is natural for any performer. You know, you start doing a character and you don't you don't really have it yet. And I I felt the first time I had it, and I felt confident was a show that Chrissy Ferraro wrote, who's one of our um, writers at Sesame. She's always had such a great way. She, she writes Elmo in such a wonderful uh, way because she can really access all of his emotions. You know, uh, Elmo's not always happy in her scripts. Mm -hmm. Elmo can really feel things. And um, she wrote this beautiful show about, um, it was a Halloween episode. And I think it was my second year as Elmo, maybe Halloween episode where he was dressed up as this astronaut and it was his favorite astronaut character um, from comic books. And he made all, he made the entire costume by himself. So it was great. It was like this, it was really funny. Actually, the, the shop built a water cooler helmet and it was a real water cooler. So I had the weight of a water cooler tank <laughs> over my head, uh, which is heavy, but it was really funny just sort of the way it sort of moved. And I, and you know, he had aluminum foil on his, you know, a space suit and it was just all homemade and beautiful beautiful work um and he was elmo was real proud of it and and this uh, am character comes along and he has all the official stuff he's got the astronaut i don't remember what the guy's astronaut sam or something like that he's like i have the official astronaut sam helmet and the official astronaut sam laser guns and and elmo just sort of felt so deflated about that and he felt bad because his stuff looked he was embarrassed by it and 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 it was a real emotional show. And and I always was excited about and still get excited about doing shows where Elmo can feel that emotional range. And like a kid, you know, kids are kids are really erratic in their emotional. <laughs> they're happy one second, they're angry the next, and they're happy again. Then they're then they're sad. And um and Chrissy just wrote this beautiful show. And for whatever reason, it really clicked that day. Yeah. Um, I was very nervous about it because it was such a heavy show. It was very emotional. And, and Joey was directing, I remember, and he was so patient with me and supportive. And uh, that was the day that I felt like, I think I can do this. I'm not there yet, but I think I'm going to be able to do this. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people, um, you know, not necessarily in the puppeteer community, but people who, you know, see the show from, from a, a periphery, think of Elmo maybe as a one note character because mm -hmm. they know the doll they know oh you know tickle him and he laughs and whatever but he really is like one of the most layered characters and it, it must have been it it must have been a great opportunity to have that script for you to play so you could really get a sense of all the notes that are associated with him i i always look forward to things like that um i sort of when i started doing elmo kind of wrote a bio for myself I never really consulted with anybody, but I would write my feelings about what I thought he was. Um, and I, I came to the conclusion that there are kind and I've now sort of adopted this theory that Elmo plays differently in different scenarios and different universes, right? So you have the, the series Elmo, who is a young, he is a young child and he, um, he has all of those things and he can, 
but he can also turn into a slightly older, snarkier character when he's on The Tonight Show or when he's in a live appearance when he can sort of goof off with somebody. Um, certainly when you're doing a toy, that's a completely different, that's a different um, skill set almost. Um, because not only are you are you trying to make that as loving as a as a feeling as you can get, because you know there those dolls are really comfort items for kids, and and there's a lot of trust in that, and so you want to make sure you're really bringing across not this screaming high falsetto, but a very genuine, sincere, loving quality, while also maintaining your diction and stuff, because it's on a voice chip, and that's going to compress and crush and things like that. So, um, you know, I kind of play them different ways in different universes. Um, but at the end of the day, yeah, I, I, you know, I think it was something I was excited about too, adding some layers to Elmo. Um, and I'm always pushing for that. I'm always pushing for, does Elmo really love this? Can he not like it? You know, can he, can he not like, I don't know, bro I'm just saying an innocuous thing, broccoli or whatever. Can that, can we decide that that's something that is that cause there's a story then if he loves it, that's the end of the story. Um, so I'm always sort of pushing for that. And, um, does Elmo have to love everything? <laughs> right. And, you know, and that is something I genuinely question. If I look at a script and I say, okay, well, does he really love umbrellas? Right. <laughs> you know, can, <laughs> can he be indifferent about umbrellas? Yeah. Because, um, you know, I always, uh, my favorite moments with Elmo were when Kevin could really be himself in in, in live appearances and 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 uh, goofing in between, off in between takes. And there's a much it's a very rich character if you if you look at it uh, you can choose to look at it as what a lot of people see but i like to think he's 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 pretty layered if you're if you're willing to look for it